Praise the Lord. Welcome to AIM. Guys, I got you in my little holder that's around my neck. I thought I would take you guys with me to go and check on the chickers and the animals and, yeah, see what's going on out here at the mini farm. We just got home from the vet. Um, any of you who are interested in a good vet, an excellent vet, I should say. Um, stay tuned for that video. This video will be coming out first, and then the vet video will be coming out second. So, yeah, I want to recommend a vet to you guys. I don't normally do stuff like that, but this one is really, really good. And I know a lot of you will be coming either purchasing your pet here or bringing your pet with you. And it's important to keep up with the vaccinations and things like that, the um, anti-tick and also deworming. So can you guys see in there? There's no eggs. That's a mystery, guys. I don't know what happened, but what I do know is I was seeing um, the baby goat and baby girl's mama in there along with sister, sister, right here, sister, sister, and their mama. What's up, big mama? I'm watching them get milk. Watching her get milk. <laughs> so anyway, those two, those two were in that pen. And the next thing I knew, the next day, I saw there were no eggs in there. So I don't know what happened, guys. It's a mystery. I don't know if they broke the egg, moving around in there, and then the other animals... The chickens ate it, or what? I really don't know what happened. So, I hope this video is going to turn out good, because like I said, you guys are on my neck, and I'm doing my work. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. Really don't. So, they like to play in this water here, the geesey geese. Every time I come down here, I go ahead and check it. If it's like this, dirty and low, I just rinse it out in fresh water. It's only in the mornings that I scrub it. They have water in the blue bucket and the other drinker, but they like these. So anyway, that was a mystery. I don't know what happened to the eggs. What I do know is they're totally gone. Five eggs. So, anyway, I'll take you guys back over to the puppers when we finish here. I did not pick the eggs yet. The only ones I picked was from first thing this morning. Just a few eggs over there. So, I'm coming in. It's not time for their water yet. It's only about, it's not quite, maybe about one o'clock. Well, I have my other phone. Let me see what time it is, guys. Ah, 104. Okay, I need that information because I've got to write what time I'm picking the eggs. So we'll do 1 p.m. I picked some this morning as I fed them and gave them water. I did turn the lights on again um, this morning. So this scratch right here, I'm just trying different ways of keeping records to see how I want to keep them. So this right here, see, that's a problem, guys. I don't know if you can see it. 
anyway, I'm not going to play around with it because I don't know if you can see it. But right now, what I'm keeping records of is that I turned the lights on, that the times I picked them up, the times I put the sawdust in, and uh, yeah, I'm also calculating how many of each size of eggs I'm getting and how much we're charging for each size of the egg. And then I'm putting that down as the total amount of CDs that we're making with the egg production we have every day. Now, it doesn't mean somebody came and bought them all, but it does mean that that's how much they produced. And according to the size and the price, how much we would get. So we'll come in here. I always have to be careful when I first come in because they leave me an egg right here at the gate. They also like to leave an egg right here on this side. And they're really big eggs, guys. We technically should have three sizes, but we have two. We have large and extra large. Really, we should have a jumbo because a lot of them, a lot, I'd say about at least half of the extra large are probably technically jumbo as we would get in the U.S. And some of them are even bigger than that. So I'm just looking over here. They have food. They have water. No eggs over here. They're just gathering around, laying down. So that's what I do normally. I check the floor and then I'm coming to check these boxes. Sometimes they lay one or two. On occasion, they'll lay me one over here in this, but normally they don't lay me any here. This is another place they like to lay one is right up here. And then we'll see what we get, guys. Sorry, Missy. Okay, that should be 30 right there. That's how I do them. Um, I bought these at Dollar Tree in the States and I just had them around. This is a little bit easier for me. They're solid. Um, a couple of them got broken um, when somebody else was picking the eggs. So, yeah. But I'll basically just take two and then get two crates at a time. Okay, Missy, you always have a lot to say, but as far as I know, you're not laying eggs. You just come in the box and lay on the egg and act like you laid it, but you didn't lay it. Mm-hmm. Or are you security? Is it your job to keep them safe? Remember what I said, ladies. I give you food, water, sawdust, water again. Take care of you. And what do I ask for? Each one lay one. That's it. One egg a day. That's it, ladies.
Okay. Okay, so that is another crate right there, which I call 30 a crate because that's what goes in the crates. And then we will come back for some more. So let's go. Okay, ladies, excuse me. You know the drill. We close that securely. And we close this in case a goat decides to jump in the gate over there. So like I said, I had already picked some. And then this is what I do. I um, take them and sort them into here. And sometimes guys, when the eggs are really big, it can make some of the the other ones look really small. So, yeah. That's what kind of happens sometimes. But those who buy the eggs, they understand. They know that some of the eggs I'm putting in there are huge. Way huge. So, that's a full crate. I go ahead and um, another one here and see like this one is so big it's going to make everything else look really small. And this one too. This one is super huge. So these are extra large but they're going to look pretty small next to those because of how big they are. So I don't know. That's just how it is, the nature of it. Um, I try to put another bigger one next to it and kind of gradually take it down, but just to even the crate out as well, because when you got it like that and it's really big, it's like bulging up the crate when they're sitting together are sitting on top of each other. So try to be careful. And this is me picking and sorting the eggs. The ones that are dirty, I just take this silver thing and gently wipe it off to get the, I think that should be here actually. Yeah, and get all the, um, the stuff off. Make it look a little more presentable. And that's how we do it. So like I said, that was two crates, but I already had picked some this morning, so... That's why we have a little more, so it's okay. I mean, at the end of it, I didn't record how many I picked up this morning. I just picked them up as I saw them there. I knew we were going to the vet, so I just wanted to get whatever was in there. So I still have my boots on, guys. These are my boots. I only go in here to the chickers. Hi, chickers. So now I'm going to come and come back through. I always start again at the beginning just to see if anybody has laid me another egg yet. That one that's very vocal there isn't even laying eggs yet. And they say that some of them will be like that. Okay. Sorry, Missy. Sorry, Missy. Mm-hmm. I hear you. I do hear you, Missy. I hear you. But you know the deal, right? 
Each one lay one. This is my nice big giant white chicker. This chicker likes me to pet it. It's not afraid of me, but they pick on her. I don't know why they pick on her. She's pretty. She's a pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. Mm-hmm. I hear you, Missy. I do hear you. See, you guys? I say she likes me to pet her. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. Probably something else in reality, but that's what I say. And I do pet her. What, Missy? What? What? Hmm? What, Missy? You're very soft and pretty. Yes, you are. Not that you're not. Not that you're not. But she likes me to pet her. Sorry, Missy. Is that right? Is that really what's going on? Okay, that is 30 right there. So that's what I do. I have more in here. I hope you guys can see good and you're not just like looking at the floor. If the video's bad, I guess I won't post it, but I found a way I could take you guys along with me on a walk, so I just wanted to give it a try. Hopefully I'll be able to post it. You'll know if you see it, I guess. Sorry, Missy. I'll be out of your way in just a minute. Okay, now you got more room to lay an egg. Seems like they broke one there. Okay, that's another 30. So we'll take these out and go sort them. I just think this would be beneficial for those of you who are considering doing this. You can hire somebody, but for me, I prefer to work it right now. Um, so in the future, when we hire somebody, I've done the work. And I already know what it entails. I won't cheat the worker by giving them too little amount. Um, and I also know how things go. We won't get overcharged. And the other thing is, like, our granddaughter was helping us. And guys, she's not a farmer at all. So this is all new to her, and she's a little bit nervous about the chickens pecking her. Although we have our chickens de-beat, but she was nervous about that. So sometimes it, I think it would cause her to jump or something, and some of the eggs would get broken. 
Sometimes a lot. Not a lot, a lot, but a good amount. When you're doing business, you know, every egg adds up. So sometimes 10, 15, and, you know, if you work it, then you know what that is coming from. If you don't work it, you're not going to know. You're going to think they're breaking them. But, um, you know, then I took over, and I was saying to that um, we have to keep the sawdust level up so that there's plenty of sawdust in there so the eggs don't drop on the floor and so they don't get so dirty because they were really getting dirty. But when you keep the sawdust good, it helps with all of that. So now we're down to maybe zero eggs broken or one and most of the time when they break either it's the ones that were laid on the floor or i've dropped it or i hit it together because you guys see this isn't the most perfect way i'm sure to pick the eggs but they do have plastic crates i guess like these that you can buy and pick the eggs in those but I already have these and I'm used to them now so that's why I'm picking them like this but I'm sure you could get well I know you can get the ones that are bigger that that mimic these and they're plastic so you, that's how you pick your eggs and then bring them in I could probably take a lot of crates at a time up and if I'm gonna do a larger scale I'll probably have to transition to those but for now for our little 300 chicks I don't really should go there for our little 300 chicks um you know this one is okay Okay, so let's go back and see what else we get. So, so far that's a little more than four crates. Each crate holds 30 eggs. Mm -hmm. so let's see what else the ladies got for us. And as I'm walking in, guys, so this is how I do my things. As I'm walking in, I'm always monitoring the water okay i'm always seeing the water i do see this one's very low and that one's very low but i'm also making sure that it's not spilling out on the floor so when i put the water in i'm always looking at that too i turn around and look is the level going down fast because sometimes it can cut you off guard so that's a routine i've started doing a long time ago I'm also observing the chickens, how they're acting. They are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're eating, they're resting, they're drinking, you know, they're moving around, they're looking energetic. I hear them. Um, I'm listening to the sounds that they're making. I'm observing how they're acting. So, as I'm walking in, I'm also looking for eggs on the floor. So these are the things that I do. Um, I wanted to stop and tell you that because I might forget to say it because I'm just used to it. So if I'm a little distracted as I'm coming in, that's why. Also, when I'm picking the eggs, I'm observant about the sawdust that is in the boxes and how it is so i'll know morning time is the time i add a few handfuls if it's needed to each one of the boxes here the only other box i add it to is the top one closest to the gate over there because that one there has been an egg broken a couple of times two different 
times there has been the broken egg there. And what I found the last time is that there's a space here and the wood is kind of at an angle. So that sharp edge is right there. And when they have their butt in there and they lay the egg and it hits that sharp edge, it, it cracks it. So that one, when I'm adding sawdust, I always put some there. They always knock it out, but that's just how it goes. So I'll go back through. Missy's in here, but she hasn't laid an egg. See how it is now. I will be putting a little sawdust in the morning in some of these. What's up, Missy? And I just usually check to see. See, I have an egg. A fresh egg. It's a little teeny one. That might be the first egg that lady laid. Yes, Missy. Yes, Missy. So I just go back through. I, I probably take too much time doing that. You don't really have to. That's just what I do. So I get all the eggs. And here we go. We're right back where we were. So we'll be getting these out. Like I said, guys, I don't know how this video is going to turn out. I hope it turns out good. I'm not a professional, guys. Just so you know, I am... You know, I haven't been doing this for years. We've been doing this for a little bit now. I think one egg was broken in there. Um, but if it breaks, like sometimes they have a very soft shell. And if the egg breaks, then the chickens will eat the shell and everything. So that is them on the other side of this, um, picking at the wood or whatever they do over there, eating the wood. Okay, ladies, last but not least. Sorry, Missy. Mm-hmm. Well, you know the deal, ladies. Each one lay one. And then I get the eggs, right? I come and pick the eggs. You want to get out? You can get out. Go ahead. Sorry, Missy. All right. So that's what I have. I'll take some of these off and set them here. Yes, Missy. Yes, Missy. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, so that is the last of them. As I'm walking out, once again, I'm observing. And I'm looking for any straggler eggs on the floor anywhere. And I don't see any. Sorry, ladies. So that's it for now. I will come and um, change the water in a little bit. We'll finish sorting these and we'll get a count.
sometimes too whoa that could be a problem that's where some of your eggs can break too um sometimes you can hear the sound of the shell of the egg and if it seems like you're scrubbing it and it's kind of hollow sounding or something like that you know you got to be careful you don't want to scrub it so much that it breaks i've done that i've broken them before because i scrub them too much trying to get them perfectly clean so what i've learned to do is just not do that and just get it as clean as i can and then leave the rest like this one it seems like one egg broke in there but we're not going to count that because i don't see evidence of it except for on here so that was just what they did they ate it i guess they love it i did my hand hit one time the side of the box oh this one is very soft this one is very very soft so you see how it is guys this one is super soft the shell just pushes in so i will keep this one i will still um count it but i will keep this one so what i do is i put it to the side that would be a large egg and what i'll do is i'll take one of these large eggs and represent it here so now i'm done with this one i don't count it because i got one representative egg right there so and we do eat eggs so i would take eggs anyway the other thing that i'm doing now that i'm doing differently is i'm taking the eggs from the 16 chickens it used to just be 10 and I used to take all the eggs from the 10 chickens and those were our eggs that we would have to eat but then i started adding them with these because people were coming for eggs a lot and we didn't have enough and i was starting to add them with these eggs and sell them so and then i just stayed doing that so that's what we do now. We sell all the eggs. So when I need eggs, I just come and I take them. Um, so that's how that ended up being like that. So what, um, what I've been doing is that if one breaks or something, I just take it. Because we, uh, we don't have that many broken anymore. So I just take it and then um, all the eggs I pick from here, from the 16 chickens, I end up putting them into these crates. I don't count them as those. I have a separate space on there where I put how many eggs those were. But I do count it as far as the money, how much that we made. So this is... Um, 150 and then a hundred and fifty all right let's put them like this 160 170 two four six seven. 177 eggs so i write that on my first pick it's one o'clock so actually guys i might only have two picks today i might just pick them at the end of the day so 177 that's a good amount that's a good amount and there was one broken so i do record that one broken yep so, and that's how I will leave it now. And, um, yeah. So, that's how I will leave it. It's getting close to time to do the water. So, all I do with that is we have it set up nicely. Um, I pull all the drinkers out. 
and I line them up over here. Big boy is there. He always moves when I come. So we line them up here, and then I use the water hose there, and I go ahead and fill them up. I rinse them out, fill them up, and put them back in. So that's what I do at 2 o'clock. Since it's a little bit after 1, I might go ahead and do that. I see two drinkers in there are pretty low. So I'll probably go ahead and just fill their water now since I'm already down here. Like I said, it took us a little while because um, we went to the vet. As a matter of fact, I did want to show you guys the puppers. So let's go for a walk. I'll come back down after I'm done with the video. Changing my shoes because I don't wear boots out there. I keep the boots in this area here. I would like, I saw, I don't know if you guys follow uh, Farm Up, Dr. Daniel. He's a medical doctor in Uganda. And he gave that all up to do poultry farming. I really enjoy his channel. Um, you guys should go and check it out. Anyway, he has a foot dip. So when you put your boots on, you dip your feet into this foot dip before you go into the chicken pen. I really, really like that idea. So I hopefully want to get one of those made so we can dip our feet before we go in the chicken pen. It's a uh, disinfectant just to make sure you're not carrying anything in there. So Big Mama's in her place. And there's the poppers. Puppies, pup, pup, puppy pups. Look at my puppers. Look at my cutie cuties. It's hot, guys. It's hot. They're in the shade, though. They have water, fresh water I just gave them. I'm going to feed them. And um, I still need to move their pen. But since we had to go to the vet today, it kind of put me a little bit behind. So I'm not sure that I'll get it moved. I'm contemplating maybe put it right over here. Because this place always has good shade. And the ground cover is pretty good. So hopefully this stuff will survive them being over there. I was trying to find another place to see where the best place is to put them, but this is looking like the best place for now. The only thing, uh, yeah, I have to move the wood and everything. They really like sleeping on that wood for some reason. You know, and I won't have the tree for the corner, but I'll probably use this tree for the corner. It's getting really fat, guys, so soon it's, I mean, it is coming up a little, but you see the trunk of the tree is getting fat. I hope you guys can see it. You're around my neck, so I don't know, like I said, what you guys are really seeing. Like, this place under here has shade all day, and I like to get them out early and leave them out late, till late, so at least... 6.30, I want to put them outside, and by maybe 6.30, I bring them back in, back to their house. So we keep them in the house just for safety purposes. Not our house, their house. And just to make sure, it's nighttime, and you never know what can happen. Um... Peace is a pretty big girl. She loves playing. She loves playing with puppies, but she's a pretty big girl. So they're kind of young still. So I, we don't want any injuries or anything like that. Um, yeah. So that is the thing. So we keep them inside secure at night when they're sleeping. And then during the day, we bring them out. So their routine pretty much is to eat, drink, poop, play, sleep. That's it. 
And right now in the heat of the day, they just like to sleep. So I think, um, like I said, this place is a good place for them. I'll make the opening where I take them in and out. I'll probably make a little, maybe make a little gate. I don't know, guys. I really don't. I'd like to have a little gate, but I might not have time to do that when I move it. I might just end up moving it. And what I'm doing here with the sticks is I'm just giving the middle support. It's not in the ground or anything. It's just giving it a little support in the middle. Yep. So I had the string tied on there when I just had one layer of fence. So that will come off as well. And we'll see when I get it over here. We'll have to remodel it a little bit because the puppies are growing and we added another layer of the fence to the top. So yeah, so that is my goal. I just want to give them some nice green grass to lay on, a clean spot, a new area where they can enjoy themselves. I do let them out here, guys. They run around in the grass out here, so I do let them out here, let them have fun. They were getting milk from Mama, and then I think somebody started biting. Mama wasn't having it, so they got cut off. <laughs> but... I have um, a vitamin type uh, appetite enhancer. Um, it's basically vitamins, kind of like you see, you can get anywhere. It, it boosts their appetite. So we'll be feeding them more, I guess. And I do still have some puppy milk left because they are done um, eating the the soaked food. So as soon as they're able to chew the hard food, I'd like to let them have that to keep their teeth strong and clean. So what I had learned is that the soft puppy food or soft food is not really good for dogs. The hard food is good. It keeps their teeth strong and clean. So that's what I like to use. So I think I will get a bottle together and see, since they're still drinking from their mom, I'll see if I can give them the rest of that puppy milk, if they'll drink it. Yep, they'll lap it from the bowl, but it takes them forever. So if I can get it in their belly with the puppy bottle, I'll try and do that. So that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed picking the eggs with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the puppies. And yeah, what I'll say is that stay tuned for that veterinarian video. If that's something you are interested in, I just made a separate video just for that because some of you might not be interested in traveling with us to the vet and I did not film inside because the owner was not there. So um, I'm sure he doesn't mind. Like I said, he's even on Facebook, Dr. Coney. So check, the, uh, check out that video and you'll find, you'll find some information that might be helpful to you if you're looking for a vet. Highly recommended. Mm hmm so that's what we got going on here it's hot out um, I'm gonna leave it at that and stay tuned for the next videos guys I'm trying to get some more things for you guys you know the schedule is pretty busy for everybody as you know it doesn't matter where you are in the world everybody's busy so we're trying to schedule and get these videos that I've been talking about to you guys so you can have the information um, if you need any help transportation help finding a place to stay buying land you know it's always helpful to have somebody that has their boots on the ground here and to help you out I've heard a lot of stories about people renting places and then getting there and it's not what they thought it was. 
So, and that's what we got going on. If you guys need help, we're here to help. So just contact us. The website, guys, is always in the description box. A-A-I-M-C-S dot com. Go to the contact us page and contact my husband, Maxwell Mensa on WhatsApp. Very simple. You'll definitely get a hold of him. You can get a hold of me as well. But if you're wanting pricing and availability of anything that we're talking about here, puppies, land, apartments, Airbnbs, a house for sale, land for sale, whatever, transportation services, any other services, guys. We help you with anything that you need because we did it all ourselves too. So we do have contacts that are trustworthy that won't take a lot of money from you and that will give you legitimate um, whatever services, whatever it is you need. So be careful when you're out there, guys, just picking people off the Internet, including us. Um, but we're here. I show you everything. Um, we've had clients, many clients come through us, and they're really thriving here. So, yeah. So contact us if you need anything. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go at that. Till next time, God bless you.